intoxication can actually impact whether a defendant can be held accountable for a certain crime. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're intoxicated, it may impact your state of mind. It may impact your ability to form specific intent to commit a crime. Now, I'm not saying these are often winning defenses, but they are viable defenses. They're defenses that are recognized in the law. Let me give you a concrete example. If somebody is charged with assault with intent to kill, that's attempted murder, but in the District of Columbia, it's called assault with intent oh, yeah, to kill. Is, yeah. If somebody is so intoxicated, whether under the influence of alcohol or drugs, that they have a really hard time even forming specific intent, that can actually serve as a defense to the crime of assault with the intent to kill, but it would not be a defense to a lesser crime, what we call a lesser included offense of assault. So a defendant might say, look, I was falling down drunk. I didn't know what I was doing. I couldn't even form the intent to kill, but the evidence proves that the defendant clearly assaulted somebody even if the jury believed that he was so intoxicated he couldn't form the intent to kill. I'm not saying it's a winning defense, but it is a recognized defense in the law. So that's one reason prosecutors will investigate somebody's level of intoxication at a relevant time, like at the time of an offense. How about witnesses? Well, in violent crime cases, now let's make our way to white collar crime cases, but certainly in violent crime cases, whether a witness is intoxicated or not can be of huge consequence because if a witness observes something while they're under the influence of drugs or alcohol, that might impact their ability to perceive accurately, their ability to later recall what they perceived when they were drunk, when they were high. So intoxication is always a topic of interest when we're investigating crime and we're dealing with witnesses to those crimes. A little bit less so in the white collar crime context, but still, you're almost always going to be interested in whether any of the witnesses, any of the defendants, anybody of consequence to the case might have been intoxicated at a time relevant to the facts of the case. Now, let's go to Donald Trump specifically. Donald Trump may try to raise what's called an advice of counsel defense. My lawyer told me I could do it. Therefore, I should be held blameless and you should blame my lawyer for giving me bad legal advice or legal advice that might have prompted me to violate the law. What's the most simple, basic example of an advice of counsel defense? My tax lawyer told me I could take that deduction. So I took that deduction. Turns out I couldn't take that deduction and I actually violated tax laws. Advice of counsel defense. My counsel told me it was okay. And there are a thousand variations of that. 